Watch out, because this offense is giving folks problems. Major problems. Having built a system that maximizes each of his explosive playmaker's talents, head coach Mike McDaniel has receivers regularly running into wide open grass, leading to big chunk plays and the number one and number four pass catchers by yardage in the league. He's got these old ass defensive coordinators scrambling to keep up, and we're going to show you how he's getting it done. Threatened by the big play, modern defenses have started sitting further and further back in zone and cushion, trying to cut off the advantage brought about by the high flyers of the modern game. Mike McDaniel has seen this and found an exploit, attacking it vertically by multiplying his speed. With two superstar burners at his disposal, McDaniel has ramped up the motion even more than his mentor Shanahan's offense, getting his speedsters on the move and involved together in the play. Here's a great example. Starting out in a balanced formation, first look at the cushion teams have to fight Tyreek's speed. To counter the cushion, McDaniel will bring Hill in motion, allowing him to start the wheels early, snapping the ball with him still in motion, forming a stack with fellow speedster Jalen Waddle shortly after the snap. This puts the defense into a real bind and is exactly what we mean when we say multiply the speed. Hill is already on the move, making him even more dangerous, and with two burners essentially starting their route from the same release points, there are so many dangerous ways that they can attack the defense. On this occasion, Miami will run a play action to suck up the underneath level. Waddle will run a deep spot to the middle of the field, and Hill will sprint like he's going long on the wheel before slamming on the brakes for the comeback. The route, speed, and deceleration were too much for Jonathan Jones as Hill turns him inside out and upside down, creating multiple yards of separation. Pausing on the release, you can see how the play design works to make this an easy throw. It's not only a large window to hit, but with clear sight lines and a clean pocket and the backers out the way distracted by the fake, leaving an easy 1-2 to find Reed on the back end. Nice anticipation by Tua here, something you're going to see throughout. This time against Buffalo, and it's a very similar balance formation to how we started out with last time, with Hill again coming in motion aiming to attack the Bills vertically. Miami will again run play action to suck up the linebacker level, and Craycraft playing the ex-receiver role will run a post route, clearing out the middle of the field for Hill to attack with the deep dig off the motion. Look how the wheel forces Jaquan Johnson to turn his hips and play Hill as if he's going down the boundary. And once again, Tyreek turns his man around with a great sharp cut, running into open grass. The play action again keeps that underneath level way up before the sticks, and Tua hits Hill without a defender within a 5-yard radius. Great hustling and tackling by the Bills here. Most coaches would see this and say, get in the face of the stack and try to break up the momentum but then they would simply pick play you to death. We have to assume the Lions were expecting Hill to motion across the formation here, because on the return to form the stack, it reveals he's man-marked by D-lineman Julian Okwara, and a quick outside release from Waddle lays the perfect pick to free Hill on the wheel. As teams scramble to keep up with the motion, this opens up opportunities for the front man in the stack. And with the unique speed that Miami possesses, this allows them to attack the level space vertically. With so much speed on the field, the Vikings have Harrison Smith 16 yards off the line, and he only continues to bail post-snap, worried about all that speed. This time, Trent Sherfield will run the motion to threaten the deep bomb. Waddle from the inside slot will come back across the grain as the check down out of the play action, and Hill will run an 18-yard spot route. This time, it's Teddy with the ball, and even with less zip on this with him getting lit up, Hill has plenty of separation to rise for the easy catch. Honestly, Hill really is a menace on this concept. Here's the five-step drop version against the Lions. And look how far off the safeties play, scared of that speed. Good work here between Tua and Tyreek to understand the space and to be in sync. It's certainly not just Hill all day either. Jalen Waddle is just as instrumental to this offense as anybody else. And this time, it's his chance to be rewarded by the motion. Sherfield is again running the motion, this time more out of a passing-friendly look with Miami again using the play action to hold the first level. Hamlin has to come down from his safety level to shut down the easy flat throw, and Waddle shows why he's a master of the corner route. Watch how he attacks the inside of the field hard on his release to sell the crosser. Then, when he sees his man fully open to play it, stem hard into his blind spot, then cut hard to the boundary to lose him. 
This stack motion again shows up in their RPO game when they use it to create space for the skinny post. The motion keeps the corner and flat occupied while the read moves the linebackers. Chase the ball and Tua has a wide open receiver and throwing lane. Seriously, they run this to death and teams just seem to have little answers to stop it. It doesn't just benefit the side towards the motion either. It can be used to manipulate the defense as a whole and open up opportunities on the backside of the formation. Again, Miami will bring a motion behind a speedy receiver here in Jalen Waddle, causing a shift underneath in the Lions cover three. The wrinkle here is they're bringing Gusecki on the motion, hiding Hill at the back of a tight set bunch. He's two yards off the line of scrimmage in an almost H-back roll. This opens up the threat of the under or push pass, giving the defense another thing to worry about. Miami will of course go play action, running the wheel dig play, and watch how this all opens up the backside corner for Hill. The secondary and backers shift with the play strength to cut it off, leaving Hill with only two defenders to worry about. And rewinding to before the snap, you can see the motion shift the flat defender inside, forcing him to scramble harder to play the running back after the snap, not allowing him to gain vertical depth to bracket Hill, which leaves him wide open. Having Hill set two yards back from the line of scrimmage here actually creates better spacing, allowing him to time his corner route with a play action, and he's as wide open as you'll ever see in the NFL. And here it's used away from a stack to attack the Vikings cover six, verticals to stretch the quarter side using the motion, and the patented play action to hold the backers, leaving a long crosser open to waddle. And that's the third quarterback we've seen on this tape, Skylar Thompson with a nice ball. Now we've been talking a lot about schemes, but a certain amount of this is just down to straight talent. Most teams don't have one legit burner, let alone two. Tyree Kill is not only the fastest receiver, but let's be honest, he's the best in the game right now. Able to attack all three levels of the defense and carve them open with equal opportunity. Often to us, he looks like a high school wide receiver on tape because he just looks so much faster and better than the man opposite him. Here, the Lions are running cover zero, sending all-out pressure at Tua. And even with the Lions playing way off, Tua will attempt the jailbreak option, launching to Hill on the slot go. Hill is really that fast, catching his man ball watching and beating him despite the 11 yards of cushion. The ball's short due to pressure in the face of Tua, but Hill is an expert in tracking the flight, coming back to the ball and over his man, mossing him for the completion. And he had another huge gain in this game, and this definitely should have gone for a score. More play action again this time with two deep posts, and with Waddle clearing out center field, Hill can break away from his man into a wide open secondary. Tua has to avoid the attacking Hutchinson off the edge, and does a nice job alongside Ingold to get round him. But despite stepping full force into this, can only get this just short of 50 yards, forcing Hill to come back to it. No worries for Tyreek though, as he tracks the flight and makes sure to meet it at the highest point, clinging on despite the DB laying a shot to his back. And here's the motion we've made ourselves familiar with cropping up again on this truly ridiculous catch. Hill is running the motion aiming to attack down the boundary. However, rookie Jack Jones gets on top of the route, hampering Hill's shot to go long. And it looks like Hill breaks this off, looking for the back shoulder from Tua. The connection was off in the first game of the season, and Tua reads this wrong, throwing up a floater that should have been picked off. But Hill gets up and says, I'm too strong, ripping the ball from the rookie and denying the interception. Equally as crucial in this offense is Jalen Waddle, who if we hadn't watched him play at Alabama, you could convince us was Tyreek Hill from an alternate dimension. With near instant acceleration, Waddle is a problem with the ball in his hands, able to weave and glide away from defenses and he possesses the same deceleration skills as Hill, making him a really good and ever-improving route runner. And also, his catch radius is just outstanding. Waddle has numerous times this year bailed out bad balls from Tua, stretching behind him or to the heavens to snag in errant passes. And when you have talent this dynamic, you've got to find quick ways to get it to him. And McDaniel shines again here, getting it in the hands of his playmakers early and often. He loves to draw up an end around, again, getting the ball to them while they're already accelerating, maximizing that 99 rating. There's also plenty of quick screens as an extension of the running game. Miami's base run may have struggled a bit, 
but including these types of plays and quick under routes, you actually see some good efficiency in the short stuff. And the benefit of them being so interchangeable skill-wise is you can call the exact same plays for both of them, never giving away the play because of the formation. Now with all the wild takes and all the crazy stuff about Tua, it's time to take an objective look at his season so far. The scheme is maximizing his talent, but make no mistake, He's diming too, absolutely playing the best ball of his young career. Here's the RPO we explained earlier with Waddle on the skinny post. Except this time, the linebacker stunts as if he's following the handoff before bouncing back to clog the passing lane. Spotting this on the windup, Tua puts this back shoulder to Jalen, firing it past the fingertips of the dropping 44. And he's really not afraid to fire it into small windows. Backing his accuracy, read of the defense, and zip to put it on his man. The window here to River Craycraft, and no, we did not make that name up, is as small as they come, aiming to hit the dig after the clear out post versus the cover six. Tua fires early so the safety can't jump it, putting it on his man with pinpoint precision. And here's another beauty, this time using touch to find the perfect placement. The motion reveals the Lions are playing in their cover three, and Tua knows if the safeties don't squeeze, He'll have Gusecki open on the corner. He makes sure to hold the free safety with his eyes, checking to the backside to freeze him. And this is a great touch pass up and over the levels to find his tight end for the score. This level of eye discipline is not usually seen in such a young player, but Tua can manipulate the defense to open a spot. Watch how he keeps his eyes deep here to hold Jawan Bentley in his robber zone, before checking the ball down to his back to move the chains. If he stares at him straight, Bentley can break on this and hold him short. And here it is again, helping clear a window on the slant flat concept. Tua will simulate as if he's going to the flat on this one, holding the hook curl wide with his eyes, before throwing a no look through the clean window to waddle. This ability to scan through reads and use his eyes means he's good at getting to the check down too. And with all the verticality built into this offense, backs and tight ends can feast underneath. However, it's not all smooth sailing when it comes to the Tua Tagovailoa experience. We'll leave the injury reports for someone a little bit more qualified, but there are aspects of his tape that make you wince or question his ceiling. Firstly, he's been incredibly lucky on dropped interceptions so far this season, mainly trying to force the issue when it's not there. He'll hang on to a ball too long and then still try and release it despite being almost in a turf or he'll get fixated that a passing concept must come open and become over-aggressive and careless. He predetermined that he was going to hill on this one after seeing the motion suggest man, but the Bills actually shifted to a cover two, and Matt Milano knows he should have had six. Anyone who's ever caught a lefty pass will know that it takes some time to get used to the spin, especially at NFL level arm speeds, so maybe this is having an impact on the dropped interceptions, but most likely these will regress to the mean. We also understand the questions about arm strength because there are certain throws where you wish you just could have put a little bit more on it. The more cynical observer might say that they're running all these deep routes as comebacks or spots because Tua's arm limits them to this, but there doesn't seem to be a lack of velocity to these intermediate throws and his early anticipation makes up for the arm, but we can see why people would think this could be a limiter on the offense. Even after reading the numbers and knowing how fast Tyreek Hill is, we were still shocked at just how wide open receivers are running in this offense. Mike McDaniel has utilized his personnel to absolute perfection, finding ways to attack the deep drop defense that most of the league right now is struggling with. Luckily for him, he has two burners that nobody can keep up with. You can't coach speed, but you can coach scheme. And luckily for Miami, they've got both. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for future breakdowns. We drop a video every week throughout the season. Take care.